achievement. The new frontier. <laughs> it's just a cop. Yeah, right. And the earth is flat. Treat your cough seriously with Robitussin CF Max. Nothing lasts longer and treats more symptoms for your cough, cold, and flu. Robitussin, because it's never just a cough. In a few moments, you will have an experience which will seem completely real. It will be the result of your subconscious fears transformed to your conscious awareness. Warning, this tape must not be played by government personnel. It can be extremely harmful and result in severe trauma. You have five seconds to terminate this tape. Five, four, three, two, one. still round. I'm here to tell you it's not. It's flat. Lexi, tell us something interesting. Okay. The earth is flat and a witch stole his pants. Flat Earth expert Mark Sargent thinks the moon landing was a hoax. Technically, the moon itself is a hoax. Right, but betting with Sportsbet's new iPhone app? I could do this standing on my head. Thanks, Gravity. Sportsbet's new iPhone app. Oh, it's foolproof. I know how we're different. Do you believe the Earth is flat? I know it's flat. I walk on it. Holy Holy sh what do you think the flat Earth is flat? It's a flat world after all. <laughs> Smoke weed every day. Broadcasting straight to you from a large spaceship, currently at war with mainstream science. Meanwhile, the peanut gallery is so glad that we have landed back on the moon. Finally, we can prove that the moon landing in 1969 was real. Look at that blast pattern from the latest landing. It's just like the Apollo missions. Wait, no, it's not. Well, surely our superior camera technology will give us better detail. No, it's actually worse. Well, crap, NASA sucks. Let's get on with the show so our guest can give us some true facts. Eh, it's all right. That's fine. Well, welcome to Strange World, where the truth is often stranger than fiction. I'm your host, Mark Sargent, the creator of Flat Earth Clues, which propose that all of us are living inside a Truman Show enclosed structure thousands of miles wide. Just Google Flat Earth Mark. If you can't find it, well, you're just not very good at the internet. Currently, the show is on Tuesday nights at 7 Pacific, 10 Eastern, and yes, Caroline, if it is not March 12th. 
2024, the year of the Wood Dragon, then you are listening to a rerun. Quote of the day goes exactly like this, what will be unbelievable down the road. Like many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. Who said that? Kate, the Princess of Wales. Oh, we'll we'll touch on that. My co-host, she's lovely. She's sassy. She's one of the biggest flat earth rock stars ever. Karen B from the channel. Karen B. Hey, Karen, what's going on? Not a whole lot. Just happy to be here. Another fine Tuesday evening. Yes, indeed. And we have a special guest, Crow777, who will be coming on at the top of the second segment. So we're going to have condensed headlines, condensed lucky unlucky, and of course, condensed clown world. Mm -hmm. But first, Karen, being the current queen of Flat Earth, it must be hard to find Flat Earth friends. Do you know an easy way to find cool people like yourself and solid info about our stationary, horizontal, level plane? Why, yes, that would be the Flat Earth Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. It's the perfect gift for friends, family, and complete strangers. Watch the featured every video every day for two weeks and see what happens. This will be the best $2.99 you've ever spent. Oh, so sleepy. And because it's 10 p.m. on the East Coast, it's time to, of course, Jesse. Oh, we haven't gotten to the thing there, but thank you, uh, Peanut. Uh, because it's 10 p.m. on the East Coast, it's time to say goodnight to one of our listeners, Paige. She's just put on her Popeye pajamas, got a cup of cocoa with exactly six tiny marshmallows, and will probably listen to the playback in the morning. Good night, Paige. <laughs> Don't night. forget, you can also find this program on Bitchard and Brady on Rockfin and Rumble. YouTube is not the end of Flat Earth. It is just the beginning. Shout outs, obviously, to Flat Earthers, Stephen Carpenter of the Deftones. Support the Flat Earth cause. Get the coolest hoodies ever. Go to the Strong Dot family, won't you? Pick up some merch. Uh, let's see. We got meetups, 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 meetups. Here we go. Uh, let's see. Mark, Karen, get Master Gunner. Hope you're doing well. Next meetup uh, for Jesse will be Saturday, March 23rd from 6 to 9 p.m. at Red Rock Canyon Grill, 9221 Lake Hefner Parkway, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. RSVP him by calling Jesse at 781-857-9175 or email him at 300kmileprius at gmail.com. He will have a P1000. By the way, it's being phased out uh, the next month or two. It's going to be replaced yes. by... Yes. I know. Been that long. I Remember when it was the 900, Karen? Remember way back when? And What's that, Karen? Is that a P1000? It is. This oh, thing is massive. That takes me back. To the glory days of 2017. Oh, remember <laughs> Game of Thrones? All right. Uh, let's see here. The other meetups. Uh, March 26th, West, West UK. That promo is on my channel. Chicago, March 23rd. That promo is on my channel. Los Angeles, California, March 19th. The Flat Earth uh, Equinox meetup. That's going to be there. The Flat Earth Vegas Meetup March 10th, meet up on my channel, and of course, that's already passed. Today's the trap. You're right. You know what? I'm gonna delete that one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I had to delete that off my, I had to right. put that in the past meetups on my website today. Ah, my fault. And uh, the Flat Earth meetup, the Eclipse meetup, New York, April 8th, with David Weiss, Zulu One, Alex Lowry, and so on and so on. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and it those. looks like I will be in Indiana for the Eclipse. Well, wonderful. I will be making it to the path of totality. Hopefully the skies will open up and let me see. I'm let hoping. I'm I'm, root, I'm rooting for you. I am. Yeah. Let me let me know how it goes. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. What else? What else? What else? Do we need anything else before we jump? Um, well, let me also just mention that Mark Devlin is doing a speaking tour in the East Coast uh, in the in the Boston area. And on my website, I have links to get tickets if you live in the in the New England area. And you're within driving distance of any of those you should go support mark devlin he's a really um, smart guy he did a talk at flattoberfest of 2023 in las vegas so there you go groovy all right let's get to it uh condensed headlines first we're, we're just gonna punch through these peanut keep track of time Foxnews.com. Let's get the obvious ones out of the way. Watch Ukraine destroys prize Russian vessel. UK praises major victory over Moscow. Wow. Why would the UK take take such stakes in this? Why would they be rooting for it? Well, could it have to be something to do with the SAS ninjas that probably took out the ship? Probably, because Ukraine's not doing it. Remember, Ukraine's not fighting Russia. 
it's NATO. And by that, I mean the United States and Britain for the most part, with some other little European countries thrown in for flavor. Next one down, futurism.com. Oh, let's go with some Elon hating, shall we? Elon Musk says his starship will spin for artificial gravity. Even a tiny gravity vector is better than none, says the obviously genius Tony Stark wannabe piece of crap. <laughs> Whatever. Again, every, any headline he says, anything he wants to say, immediate head, somebody's going to cover it. Doesn't matter. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do that rotating centrifugal force starship thing. We'll see what happens when that thing launches. It's, oh, God. Hate that guy. Next one down, TMZ.com. Let's stick with this. You know, TMZ, by the way, the finest journalism in the world. Elon Musk blast Jeff Bezos' ex wife, Mackenzie, over DEI donations, trying to pander to Team Red. But Let's get into it a little bit. Now, if you guys didn't know, Jeff Bezos, the founder of Amazon, divorced some years ago. And the ex-wife got a you know, pretty decent settlement in the tune of $30 billion. That's B, not, not yeah. million, billion. And she said, you know what? I'm giving it all to charity. Now, if you want to give $30 million away to charity, you can do that pretty damn quickly. You want to give $30 billion away? That's going to take some time. Mm -hmm. that's just an accounting nightmare so she's given away about half of it so far about 16 billion and uh she's given it all sorts of stuff I, I don't really care who she gives the money to but he's saying what, what was his quote he said that it's like the downfall of western society i uh, see here i'm trying to look well if she's donating to this crap i mean eh, I, what I are you doing lady that's she's donating to the downfall of society then. Well, I mean, I'm just I my, my point here is <laughs> they all not, suck. Not that I think he's any better. Yeah, I was about to say, pot she, calling the kettle black. There definitely. you I was thank you. Took the words right out of my mouth, Karen. <laughs> which is which is he is in no place to talk. Look, I mean, come on, the guy runs a fake space program and he's a puppet for the US government. So right, plus wants he wants to, to put a chip in everybody's brain. He wants to be the the one who puts the digital ID on everybody. Again, if she wants to donate to blue charities, right, you have fun with that. But him calling her out on it, again, trying to pander to Team Red, whatever. Yeah, whatever. that's that's him deflecting because, of, again, he's got his wicked, like, um, evil villain plan. Like I said, he wants to put a chip in everybody. This is why he. This is why I, a lot of people think that he presses the border issue so hard, like why he's, like, pointing it out. He's like, look at all the people pouring over the border. This is a trial, you know, talking about how horrible it is. Why? Yeah. So that he can help the government put a digital ID on everybody. Right. Right. Yeah. No, the guys, the guys. He wants that contract. Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. And he, he says all the, all the wrong things uh, all the time. And it just, again, just drives me insane. Uh, next one down, foxbusiness.com. Okay. The, now, we're not picking on Elon with this one. This is just my, I, if there's an electric car or even self driving car, I'm going to call him out which is this one a story from Fox News. Tesla autopilot, similar auto driving systems rated poor by safety group. Tesla's automated driving system did not fare well in the safety new rating system, but neither did its rivals. So the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety has been testing all these cars, right? And there's the ratings are good, acceptable, marginal, or poor. And of the 14 systems rated, 11 were found to be poor, including Tesla's autopilot, uh, Nissan's Pro Pilot, Mercedes Benz Active Distance, uh, blah, blah blah, Ford's Blue Cruise, and BMW's Active Driving Assistant. The only system that performed worse than Tesla's was Volvo's Pilot Assist, which st st stunned me a little bit. It's like, really, Volvo couldn't get their act together. Uh, the top system was Lexus Teammate, which got acceptable. Nobody got good. That was it. So, and this leads into my thing: auto driving. It's never going to be like uh, Minority Report, which was which was done years ago, uh, which is the, the reason why is because auto driving cars. In fact, again, Mercedes says this in the manual. It's like only turn on our auto driving if you're in a six lane freaking highway and you're stop and go traffic. Then you go want to read a book or whatever, because the, the, the chances of damage are going to be minimal. And it knows where everything is. The cameras are all firing simultaneously. The problem is the lines on the road. The lines, the highway system is a mess. The lines aren't consistent anywhere. The system gets confused very, very easily. It really gets confused in intersections with bad lines. And then the whole thing goes to hell. You're relying on the line guys that paint the road for these systems <laughs> to work. And you followed these guys. You knew who I'm talking about, right? 
Well, I'm just thinking about the other day, I was actually driving down one of the freeways and there was a big old splatter of yellow paint all over the yeah, road. There you go. Build it. System, <laughs> system doesn't know what to do with that. Oh. Uh, okay. Last but not least, before we get to a, a new section, which I'm going to fall to the end, House panel unanimously approves bill that could ban TikTok. Now, guys, we're going to do follow-ups on this eventually. I don't know if they're just picking on the Chinese at this point and claiming that they're going, that they're listening more. I mean, at first glance, it's like the Chinese can't spy on American citizens. Only the U.S. can spy on American citizens, right? right. That, that's the first one. But the other one is if you do some sort of blanket coverage to why I knock this out, you know what's going to be in the fine print. And that is we can go after any website we want for just about any reason we want, and we can shut all sorts of stuff down if we want. So we'll see. I, I, I'm curious to see where this goes. Just give you guys a heads up. If TikTok goes down, beware of the stuff that's behind it. Oh, by the way, the kids are going to freak out if TikTok goes down, by the way. Gen Z is going to just go into epileptic seizures if that happens. Okay, so we have a, a new section we're, we're going to follow to the end. It's called, Where is Princess Kate? <laughs> because I, I enjoy this one so much because this isn't like Jimmy Fox. Where Jimmy Fox, as you know, an A-list movie star that you want to, you know, just delay till we to the point where people forget about it and he's irrelevant. That's one thing. But with the royals in Britain, they are put out there for a reason. They are the public, they are the press secretaries for their own government. And they are in the public eye constantly. And people constantly want to know where the royals are. So let's get into it. So what we're saying here is Princess, yeah, of course, the future queen. Yes, she would be the future queen. We'll see if she's alive. So <clears throat> first one down. Fox News. I'm not going to give you the whole timeline of how this started. Let's just start with no one's seen her since Christmas. Right? And it's, and it's the middle of March. Kate Middleton's name removed from royal event as Prince William responds to conspiracy theories. This was March 6th. Right? She was supposed to be at a thing in June. You know, they, they the royal schedule, like anyone, their schedule is put out months and months and months in advance. And she was put on this thing that was going to happen in June and all of a sudden she was pulled. That raised a few eyebrows. Next one down. TMZ.com, greatest journalist in the world. Kate Middleton, look, I'm doing fine. Promise. Full body recovery shot. Okay. This is the famous shot that everybody's been looking at. You can download it and, and zoom in on it. But people like Karen would have spotted it in two seconds, and they did. There's all sorts of Photoshop errors on this thing. Not to mention, it's like, okay, so you said she was in for stomach surgery, but you put her in tight blue jeans after stomach surgery? I don't think so. She's not wearing any rings on her fingers either. Also, where's William in the shot? Oh, they say he took the shot. Really? William takes his own photos now? This isn't done by one of their media people? Pfft, doubt that. <laughs> so she releases this shot. This thing was dissected so fast it didn't even last 24 hours. Her with the three kids, right? Let's go to the next one down. Dailymail.com. Kate Millicent's Mother's Day photo is pulled over manipulation fears. Pictures recalled by agencies as questions are raised over the first image of the Princess of Wales since her surgery. Yeah, you think? It was butchered. Absolutely freaking butchered. And the and AP started pulling it, but it was too late. Everything on the internet sticks. Next one down. Uh, hang on. This one hasn't come up for me yet. Karen, how, how's the headline start? The 16 Photoshop issues with Kate Middleton's Mother's Day portrait. Yeah, perfect. Throw that in the chat for anybody that wants it. That, those are the first 16 that people found. Again, if you're like Karen and you know your Photoshop stuff, you zoom in, you can find all sorts of telltale signs. There's a lot of people that have Photoshop, and there's a bunch of them that are really good at Photoshop. Okay, next one down. We got to punch through the rest of this so we can go to Lucky Unlucky. Uh, let's see here. Okay, so Catherine, Princess of Wales, responds to mother's mother's photo manipulation. Okay, so Kate, they throw her under the bus, and she makes a tweet saying that, well, what was the tweet down below? She goes, like many, this is the quote, quote of the week, many amateur photographers, I do occasionally experiment with editing. I want to express my apologies for any confusion the family photograph we shared yesterday caused. I hope everyone is celebrating and have a very happy Mother's Day. Of course, try, yeah, it's like, okay, sure. She wrote that, first off. She didn't write that at all. And second, because a royal would have time to be a Photoshop person and edit their own photos. They don't even take their own photos, let alone edit them. <laughs> Just so, so, so freaking terrible. And last but not least, before we get a lucky, unlucky, um, then then again, they try to 
immediately it's like oh no no she's fine see the very next day kate photo princess of wales seen after saying she edited mother's day picture oh there's her there's william and uh, there's a woman looking away from camera that's the only shot we have sorry guys i'm from america stunt man 101 the stump double never looks to camera that's why you can put any brunette you want in there take the shot or hell that doesn't even have to be a live shot you could you that shot could be from any time any point but they're just good they're just going to keep pushing this the royal family is panicking i don't know what happened to her but i'm gonna keep on this one till the end i think it's gonna end up better than jamie fox i'm hoping it does you know it's not gonna go away though it's this is different the longer you wait the worse it's gonna get okay lucky unlucky next one down boxnews.com stan steely dan keyboardist jim beard dead at 63 uh, let's see what happened to him. Complications from an illness in a New York hospital on Saturday. Wow. Complications from an illness. All right. Well, that didn't end well at all. That's been <laughs> Former Dallas Cowboys lineman, 46, dies following stroke. Now, granted, he was a bigger guy, but he was a lineman. And let's see here. 46 is not very old. That's how old I am. Oh, well, Karen. We said, hope you hang on. <laughs> You're doing better than this guy. Uh, yeah, well, again, yeah. They've, they, they've normalized it. Like, oh, yeah, he dropped it at 46. That that just happens. You know, ex-professional athlete dies mm. of a stroke. What causes stroke? Oh, right, some sort of blood issue. Remember, that's, that's the common thread here, common theme. Something blood-related. Stroke, heart attack myocarditis some sort of heart inflammation next one down fox news thunders bismack biombo collapses near bench during game versus trailblazers the oklahoma city coach said he's fine and just fainted anyone buying that i'm not just fainted 31 years old professional athlete just fainted on the bench at a basketball game what low blood sugar needed a power bar needed a banana what happened Hey, he's lucky, though. He made it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to read that, Peanut. <laughs> no, it's, it's just gross. Uh, well, you know, he's going to tie that to the Oklahoma. because maybe he was licking someone's feet from last okay. week. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, we okay. can't wait to hear the follow-up on that one. Who, What, what heads are going to roll there? Okay, next one down. How are we doing on time? We'll make it. BBC, this was kind of a big deal. BBC and former STV News uh, journalist Nick Sheridan dies age 32. And he was in Glasgow. He Oh, aneurysm. Boom. That was it. He was done. And let's see here. Blah, blah, blah. Yep. Happy guy. Loved his family. Something, something. Okay, next one down. Fox News. Pro wrestling star. Okay, this is kind of fun. Yutaka Yoshi. Dead at 50. After match, Yoshi was competing in a tag team tournament. You guys don't know this, but the WWE apparently also has a branch in Japan with only Japanese guys. Big and in Japan. In Japan. I, I mean, we've influenced Japan so much since the war. Uh, I Again, this guy, was he was big. He was 5'10", 352. Big guy. You do not want him doing a full suplex on you. That's a big guy. For, for a Japanese wrestler. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he, uh, what happened to him? He died of, let's see. Oh, right after the match. Condition suddenly deteriorated. And then he caught suddenly and then he was no more. So, sorry, oh. man. We'll miss you. Uh, next one down. Indiana mother appeared fit and healthy before suddenly dying aboard a uh, American Airlines flight. Yep. There's her. Taking some selfies. She was 41. She was going from Punta Cana to Charlotte. And she convulsed and died. Her cause of death yet to be determined. And those close to her said they are shocked by her unexplained death. By the way, we're not going to cover uh, in this one that, uh, that airline flight from um, Australia to New Zealand where the systems just just failed and the plane went into a nosedive for a couple seconds and 50 people that were walking around the aisles hit the roof. Did you see that? That was bad. New oh, Zealand, yeah. New Zealand's confiscating the black boxes. They're like, we want to know what happened before you, the airline, try to tell us what happened. 
right. we, we want we want to diagnose it ourselves. Yeah. Uh, next wow. one. Did you also hear about the Boeing whistleblower who fe who was found um, with a gunshot wound to the head? I'm sure I know nothing about that, Karen, or had anything to do with that one. Uh, <laughs> next one down, uh, IGN, <laughs> which is hang on, this one is uh, Hira. Oh yeah, the creator of Dragon Ball Z dies at, at 68, and he was a um, I think he was a pro shot guy in the end. But yeah, Dragon Ball Z guy, he's gone. TMZ, greatest stuff in the world. We can make it. We can make it. Uh, let's see here. TikTok star Leah Smith dead at 22 after short cancer battle. And by that, she just announced it uh, not that long ago, if I'm looking down here. Um, yeah, start of 2024. Uh, who often documented her cancer journey. She was struggling something something by february she had re-entered the hospital and the tiktok you know what got me is when i scrolled down she was still taking selfies and posting to social media all the way to the end you see that last one with her dog with her oxygen tube in her nose mm -hmm. i will say this you know what she uh she was dedicated to her craft all the way to the end but we'll get to the the extent of social media and how it screwed up people uh let's see which one's this one tmz nope nope mothership uh, Spore Boy, nine years old, suffers mild stroke after heart failure, needs $190,000 for medical bills. Nine years old, you hate to see it, but it does happen. Next one down. Sorry, we got to rip through these. Mike Peru opens about his dad's terminal, terminal cancer. He's a fighter. I Who's don't know. I don't know who that is. I don't know who much he is. Let's get past him. Radio announcer guy. Oh, okay. Uh, next one down, I think it's uh, tennis great Pete Samprince. His wife has caught turbo version of ovarian cancer. She's only 50. That's not good. And you know, she's a health nut along with her husband. So we'll have to keep up to date on that. And last but not least, before we go clown world, yeah, we'll make it. Uh, bachelor Joey Graza, Graza, whatever, Joey <laughs> reveals that he's been battling liver disease after fans call out concerning detail about his eyes. Yeah, you take enough sel selfies and your diehard fans are like, why your eyes look so screwed up? And he's like, yeah, when your liver starts failing, your color changes all over. Remember my ex-girlfriend who wouldn't uh, meet me for coffee because she developed jaundice. And it's like, what the hell happened to you? And uh, she goes, well, uh, my liver's having real problems. It's like, you didn't take the shots, did you? She says, yeah, about two weeks ago. Why? Oh, my God. No reason. All right, Clown World. We got three. First one, Captain Obvious. Spend 20 seconds on this. Avalanche forecaster Nick Burks killed an Oregon avalanche. So the guy, all he did was he skied around areas and determined whether they were prone to avalanche, and he got too close to one, and an avalanche got him. So I'd like to say he, did, he died doing what he loved. I don't know if he loved the job, but I would... I'm going to go on a limb and say he did. Next one down, CNN.com. Weight loss drug Wegovi can be marketed for heart benefits after FDA label update. Okay, so if you don't know, the generic version of Ozempic, the you know the shot in the stomach weight loss drug called Wegovi, is not covered by most insurance programs, and it costs upwards of $1,500, $1,800 a month. However, now that they're smart enough to go after the FDA and probably bribe them, and say, hey, we're going to mark this like it has health benefits. Oh, okay, then yeah, we can we can include it as a uh, 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 insurance coverage. Okay, last but not least, let's get to this. All right, I wasn't going to cover this, but damn it, social media drives me insane. And that is, you, everyone's heard of a boob job. Butt jobs, otherwise known as Brazilian butt lifts, are a terrible thing. Making your butt look like a cartoon character. You want to do an exercise, make your butt bigger. There are all sorts of exercises that can do it. Of course, it's not going to be ridiculously huge, right? But here's here's why it caught my eye. Apparently, the Brazilian butt lifts, the women are getting, because of social media and peer pressure, they're getting their butt so big, their arms can't reach around to clean themselves, and the boyfriends are calling them out on it. To Oof. quote, one, it was like an assault on my nose. Man details horrible odor coming from his date's butt as surgeons reveal why women struggle to keep clean after enhancing their bottoms. Oh my God. <laughs> I, I, I want to read just this real quick. This is a horrible surgery. Look, 
eat less and exercise or do things. If you have to travel to another country to get a Brazilian butt lift for social media purposes, you have problems, right? Uh, let me see here. There's a thing. Apparently, when you get the surgery, hang on here. Uh, yeah. About it's just... Madonna and her disgusting fake rear end. It's so insane to me. <laughs> yeah. They interviewed this, this uh, plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills. He goes, there's two secrets that Instagram models don't want you to know about their butt lifts. Wiping down there is going to be a lot more difficult because there's more to reach around. Uh, so if you're someone with a butt lift and they smell funny, you might want to tell them. They say the only solution is basically getting a bidet. <laughs> Even more money. Uh, let's see. By the way, plastic surgeons typically give their patients fair warning about the difficulties in the bathroom. Sitting after you get a butt lift is not allowed for two months, though you can sit on a toilet for a relatively quick bathroom break. Other than that, you are on your freaking stomach for two months after this. Why? Why? Again, I blame social media for so many things. Why would you do this? It's absolutely insane. It does not it does not jive. Okay, there you go. You guys can look up the article. It's out there. If you know someone's even considering this, please talk to them. Talk them out of it. It's just, it's just a terrible idea. Boob jobs again. They've been around for years and years and years. Butt lifts, I don't think it's going to track. I know. It's gross. It's absolutely gross. Okay, we're going to break. Horrible. Yeah, I know. We're going to break. When we come back, uh, we are going to bring on uh, Crow Triple Seven, and uh, and talk to him about I don't know all sorts of fun stuff. So, Karen, the music. All right. <laughs> There are some exciting new features on the Flat Earth, Sun, Moon, and Zodiac Clock app. Our new Profiles module allows you to create a personalized wall with as much or as little information as you like. Connect with other blue dots anywhere across our amazing Flat Earth plane. Share your favorite images, videos, and stories on your wall. Search for other blue dots by using keywords or by name. You never know who you might meet. Add friends to your flat earth circle. Keep track of your friend requests and invites from others in the request tab. See what your friends are up to and interact with them. In the edit section of your profile, scroll down to the search terms for your profile section and add in all of your hobbies and talents so other blue dots can connect with you. From any group chat, long press on the comment to directly link to that user's profile. From a one-to-one -one chat, click the info button on the upper right to see your options. Invite them to be in your circle of friends. With the simple swipe to the left, you can now mute notifications for selected groups of your choosing. Our images section has gotten a big upgrade. You can now use keyword searching to bring up all of the images that you're looking for. No more scrolling and hunting. We plan on adding thousands of more images as we get them from blue dots across the plane. If you are seeing this video, it's time to update your app and find your tribe. Join me, Karen B., every Moonday at 9.30 a.m. for Coffee Talk on YouTube, Rumble, and Rockfin. You never know what you'll learn about in the coffee shop. Open topic and open phones, y'all. Join me. If you see a laser in my eye, will you let me know? Yeah. <laughs> you don't think you'll know? 
notice if you have a laser in your eyeball? Well, I mean, if it's glancing, if it's getting really close, you know what I mean? Because it's fighting oh, this way. My neck. Oh my god! Welcome back to Strange World, part two of four. It's you, me, the always wonderful Karen B, and sometimes Peanut. And yeah, that was Joe Jackson stepping out from his album. Night and day. Yeah. Uh, before we bring in our guest, I want to mention really quick, there was a gentleman who wrote me, and now I can't remember his name, Lim, Lim or Or. He wrote me, and he was accusing me of actually being an AI. Karen gets accused of that sometimes. And so she does. I have been accused of being AI. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, I don't know. think you're a real person. It's like, dude, I'm a real person. <laughs> I, you're giving way too much credit to AI. AI is not that thing. And no, Karen, well, she's, well, yes. Now, yes, Karen is not an AI. Is she a board certified witch? I'm not going to no. comment on that one way or the other. Karen says no. She, uh, categorically denies it and i cannot confirm nor deny those allegations for fear of things okay we're gonna we're, our guest. we're gonna bring in our guest so our guest <laughs> you guys have been doing this for a while you guys have been doing this for any length of time you know who this guy is uh his his channel he's known as crow triple seven and he he's the guy that the creator well not the creator the founder no the this guy that discovered the moon wave first. And uh, anyway, let's bring him in. Crow, can can you hear us? I can. Thanks for having me, guys. Hey. Hey, hey I want to tell a real real quick story before we get into you, which is, and you, you probably know this if you've heard stuff over the years, which was nine years ago. I was doing an interview with some group, and I remember that uh, after the interview, they wrote me, and it was some of Eric Dubay's people. And they and Eric and, and they said, hey, just so you know, Eric wants to change up a few things about your interviews. And it's like, OK, who is Eric Dubay and why do I care? And what the first thing literally they said was, we don't want you using Crow Triple Seven's moon footage anymore. And it's like, what are you talking about? Crow's got the best moon footage in the game. Why would I ever change out of it? And, and so I was pretty blunt with him. I said, look, if someone comes out with better moon footage than Crow Triple Seven, I will use it. But until then, I'm using his stuff. I'm going to reference him every chance I get. And you know what? Nine years later, I'm still referencing you. So if anyone <laughs> ever sends me anything about the moon, it's like, oh, no, no. This is the guy you need to start watching. So it's, anyway, ir what? it's ironic you should say that because before I ever even heard the name Eric DeBay, I was told that a guy named Eric DeBay had put me on his top 10 show list. <laughs> and when I, when I asked why that was, it was because of the lunar wave, but to make a long story very short, cause I don't intend to say anything about that man. I know who he is. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> That's that. Wow. All right. That right was on. short. That's so deserves to. Let's let's get in, let's get into your history a little bit. How did you get into? Because you again, you've been you, you were kind of dragged in from the outside, and you were doing. Let's let's just go back to the wayback machine. I'll let you rattle. What were you doing back in 2015, and then that led you to be part of our community in one way or the other? Uh, well, 2015 is at least two years too late, right? So I. I started filming hardcore when I quit corporate life. Yeah. And I filmed the lunar wave on accident uh, at the real fall equinox of 2012. Oh, wow. I filmed all that year. I had all this footage and people kept begging me to do social media, which I didn't want to do. So finally, in October of 2013, I posted the lunar wave and other footage and all hell broke loose instantly. And exactly 30 days after the posting of the lunar wave, Flat Earth 
was up and running hard. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and you and you caught hell for the uh, the lunar wave. You got a lot of hell for it. There were, as you know, I mean, you're you're in in the in the field of astronomy. There's some pretty serious guys out there, and they did. If I'm not mistaken, they didn't like what you were doing. No, I had to change my phone number. Um, I walked away from my birth name. I changed all my email addresses. And even after we changed the number, we were getting calls from people claiming to be associated with NASA. And what made it worse was, well, about half the people wanted to pick a fight or threaten. And the other half were like, wow, that's amazing. What is it? So this goes on for, I think it was about a year and a half. Then it must have been the spring equinox coming on 2015, maybe. I filmed the second known lunar wave. And then it got much worse because I was the only known guy to have filmed it, which actually wasn't true. But that's that was the percept. Well, that's kind of what we thought at the time. Yeah. Um, then eventually others filmed it. Yeah. I again, you yeah, you were the the tip of the spear. I I'd never seen eighth. And and for those of you who you know haven't been with the show that long, or maybe you just haven't known Crow's work, can you describe? I don't know if you can share a screen or if you can just describe it. I'm sure you can at this point. What a lunar wave is for your uh from your point of view well first of all we should probably try to set the record straight i don't know how the name stuck whether it's something i said or someone else yeah but if i was going to name it today i would not call it a lunar wave i'd call it a firmament wave it's been filmed twice in front of jupiter once in front of saturn which pretty much tells you it can probably be filmed anywhere across the ecliptic if it's backlit yeah um the ecliptic being where supposed planets sun moon travel from our point of view uh but what it looks like is it's always two very distinct waves um their speed and their period between them varies even the apparent angle from our point of view varies mm -hmm. um the closest i could come for someone who's never seen it is if you took an old tube television from the 70s and an old v vhs tape recorder yep. and you recorded the tv screen that rolling wave you get it looks yep. kind of like that yeah that's a good one yeah i i'm old enough to remember that and yeah that's that's spot on it's a it's a wave of distortion that passes through the body that you're filming and every again you've heard this many many times i mean the the instinct for everybody in astronomy was well it's obviously the camera you screwed up somehow and what you think it is isn't what you think it is yeah true well, when I first filmed it, um, which is silly because digital failure doesn't look that way. Right. Um, I had convinced myself that it was um, equipment malfunction. And that went on for a while. I actually deleted the clip. But that very same night, I had the epiphany. Luckily, and kind of freakishly, just the camera pan alone, which I never really do. I keep my scope dead on the moon right. because things happen so quickly. It proves that it's a filmed event. And from that moment forward, everything was different. Wow. Wow. So you so I'm again, uh, yeah, forgive me. Uh, you now call it a firmament wave? No, um, I'm just I mean, it is what it is. It is. What right. It is. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying that if I had it to name over again, I think a better descriptive name would be a firmament wave. Right, right. Yeah, because like you said, it's been filmed in front of other other bodies in the sky too. Like, you know who CD is, Mark? Um, Take Back Space yeah. on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, he's filmed it with his telescope. Oh, nice. Jupiter, and I think he did Jupiter and Saturn. I do too. He was the first guy I actually interviewed. He was going by CD at the time. By the way, I just threw a random lunar wave link off my channel. I yep. can't post because I'm not a member apparently, but you guys can throw it in the chat if people haven't seen it. Yep. Um, Thank you for that. But I, you know, years ago, I quit counting 40, 50 people had filmed it. Um, so, I mean, it's a thing. So do you, do you think that, you know, I, I'm going to give you as much credit as humanly possible here. Do you think that because you pointed it out, all of a sudden people just started running around scanning through all their, their moon footage and, and just to see in hopes that maybe they caught it as well and nobody knew well, what it was until you, you first did it? 
So one of the things that kind of launched me was I was dedicated to trying to film the moon at a very high level compared to what I was seeing. Right. And so what you find is the astronomy community ain't having none of it. Um, that is not what their textbooks talk about. And I'm crazy. So most of the people filming at any level that mattered would be saying, oh, that's clearly an invisible plane trail or whatever they would say, you know, atmospheric distortion. Um, so no, I, I would have to say not that many people were filming. And even since then, I mean, I'm aware, what's the guy's name? He got a big 14 inch telescope. I met him. Um, sees all bruce sees all started filming all the time but there's really not that many people putting in the hours and sure. if you want to catch the crazy stuff like i posted i mean you're you're going eight 12 hours a night Ooh. that's rough that's rough and and of course the weather plays into it as well i'm sure there was yeah there was and chemtrails chemtrails stopped us a lot back then oh did not know how did your how did your life? I know some of these questions are going to be kind of cliche, but I, I got to ask them anyway. So, how, when 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 it started blowing up, first off, you had to you had to change all your name and 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 doing everything else. But did all of a sudden social media became established for you? You all you all of a sudden were everywhere, or did you? I mean, I don't know who does your social media for you, but did you have to start going into other platforms? Well, I don't use so the only social media that I've ever run directly is YouTube. Well, that's not true. I way, way back I had Facebook for a very short period of time. Sure. And I got fed up so quick that I bailed. So Rose runs anything else, but I don't use I will not communicate on social media. So I did run the channel up to the fall of 2017 when censorship came out in the open. Yeah. They deleted my channel without warning because we covered the Mandalay Bay false flag attack. Uh, and that was the, the the straw that broke the camel's back for the censorship folk. Right. And they put my channel back three weeks later. Now, did three they? Weeks, yeah. Three weeks later, they had put an algorithm to kill search returns on my name. And things associated with me. So before they deleted my channel, if you put Crow Triple Seven in a search engine, you got between I think 16 and 25 million returns. And that was back when it was page after page. You didn't start getting duplicates like you do know now after the first page. Right. But if you put Lunar Wave, which went into the many millions because it had been posted in so many places, right. that went way down. And so it was a few thousand. Or maybe you might get 20,000 for the Lunar Wave. But if you put Crow 777 with Lunar Wave, it went down to about 1,000. To this day, if you search Crow 777 on Google and other places, you're lucky to see 12 to 2,000 returns. And on the second or third page, it's all duplicate listings. Oof. That's rough. Yeah, who cares? They're they're censorship pigs, and I went and got my own server. I serve my own material, and I do run a Twitter, but again, I use it as a billboard. I tell people I've posted stuff off my private server, and I will not answer your questions there. There is no worse place to communicate in this entire world than social media. <laughs> Well then, then let's let's plug your stuff twice. Uh, where, what, what is the server you run? How can how can people get to it? Everything that I do that that I share with the world is on crow triple seven radio dot com c r r o w seven 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 radio dot com, and I will be filming the sky. Like I'm start, I'm getting my new equipment dialed in, and I'm getting used to it. I have a massive honking solar telescope i'm going to go on the, the sun now and i will post everything to my membership there um i will never give my work up to someone who thinks they can control it. i actually got a note years ago from youtube that said we have partial ownership of everything you've posted here and we can use any of it some of it or all of it anywhere we choose and not only that, they've deleted clip after clip. They used to notify me. I think there's probably over 100 clips that have just been deleted. But over the last couple of years, yeah. they don't even tell me when they delete it. They just take it out. 
So back up a little bit. So when when YouTube said they own some of your work or partially own some of your work, was this in regards to just moon footage or was it was it other things? I think it was pretty clear that the moon stuff was getting all the traffic, um, but it was generally written that. Um, and I think and now that I'm thinking about it, I think it was tied to revenue, you know, like if you had signed up. To whatever it was adsense or whatever it was back then right um oh, it had AdSense. yeah it had some connection to that but basically what they're telling you is they have control of your work and that they have rights to your work wow and i will never let my work be controlled or censorship or censored by anyone ever again so huh. i pay for a, a private server so it, when people i don't think i ever did I, I, I'm not sure if I did. It's been so long now. Uh, did when people tried to use your moon footage and other things, were you tracking that pretty closely? A little bit at first. And then I just didn't care because it was on YouTube and people could do what they want. And right. copyright strikes weren't a thing back then. I mean, it was stolen everywhere, used right. everywhere, lied about, told the truth about. Uh, edited, you know, whatever. And then eventually the copyright thing started catching up and becoming a thing. And I forced it a little. And then I realized, you know, it's just, I don't want to be part of this. So right. I just let it go. Got it. The, uh, did you, and, and you, I've said many times on this show, you know, don't, don't feed the trolls unless you're feeling especially frisky, you know, unless you're in one of those moods, which, yeah, let's feed the trolls. We're, were I, I am sure because I've seen a few over over the years that there were videos made with your material. It's like, here's why Crow, you know, the video of my as well have entitled, Here's why Crow Triple Seven is wrong and why. Yeah. Did you ever did you ever get into those or you just kind of stay out of that whole he said, she said thing? I made the mistake once with a guy who ended up being part of a Masonic Lodge who was probably directed to come poke the bear. Um I responded once. And then I realized uh, I'm not, you know, if someone came into my home and was being rude to my face like that, I'd show them the door. Right. And so I adopted that attitude. Um, if someone comes to any place that I'm controlling and they're unrealistically rude, they might be lucky and get a warning, but usually they're just shown the door. And so he did 27 clips in a row. And at one point, it was like he put a countdown. Crow Triple Seven has 27 hours to respond. You know, it was just, it got to be laughable. And I didn't, I just said, do whatever you want, dude. I didn't respond, nothing. And he ended up making a complete idiot out of himself. Yeah. But I've been that way ever since. You, you cannot find me in an argument online, to Good my knowledge. Um, I'm just not doing it. Good I run you. my little place. And if you go into my website, people are respectful in those comments nice. um, because I don't tolerate rude. If you're not here to talk and try to gain something, then you don't belong here. And so that's the difference. And when you go over to YouTube, it's, it's a freaking cesspool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. It's bad. <laughs> yeah. it is, it's not. Well, and you've got people that will, will show up into chats that their whole point is they don't really even care what they just want to you know, they've had bad childhoods and they want to spread that around to anyone they can. I, what's, what's I, I, I don't know what to make of it. You know, the, I made rules for myself. I don't join groups. I'm not a flat earther. I don't join any group ever. Got I it. support all kinds of things. I support what flat earth is doing. They should be doing that. Yep. If there is a thing that is sacrosanct that's not supposed to be questioned i support anyone who will go question it whether they're right or wrong if they're honestly trying to undo this world of lies then you've got my backing um if you conduct yourself and you know it goes on and on and on people trying to associate you with groups i can see it right there in the comments now Crow admits he's a bear. Well, nope, sorry, I don't join groups. I'm I'm just me. <laughs> would that would that be the uh, the Owen Benjamin bears? I assume. Yeah, yeah. No, if Crow says he doesn't join groups, I'm pretty much sure that includes everything. Everything, but, including the I'm, bears. I'm no, my I, own, I'm yeah. my own guy. That's awesome. That's great. I don't want to inherit the rules and the 
you know, I don't want to inherit what the group's coming. Here's another thing yeah. that I picked up on very early. Online, when you form a group, you may as well hand out T-shirts with targets painted on them. Because if that group does anything that matters, it will be instantly infiltrated. It will be in instantly screwed with. Yeah. And there's no way around it. And some of the people that join won't be joining because they want to be part of the group. They'll be there to cause disarray. Right. Yeah. Yes. I've already seen it happen. I see it happen all the time. Yeah. It does happen. For we're, sure. Yeah. We're we're lucky and I'm not I'm not trying to recruit you in any way, shape, or form. We're lucky in the in the FE community only because it's so difficult to we you know, we to pretend to be one of us that especially if you're making contract uh, content. Of course, like you know, the conference that Karen did in, in Vegas last year. Of course, I am sure there are people in the audience that were were not there for good reasons, but at the same time, they weren't extroverted enough to draw attention to themselves, which was yeah. nice. I've, I've it, it, sorry, go ahead. It, it's a catch twenty two, yeah. right? Because in this world, people get together to try to further the endeavor they're interested in. Right. It's just that this online world is a synthetic nightmare. Yeah. We had an information age, a true information age for less than a handful of years yeah. until the AI that nobody knew existed and their ability to censor and monitor every single video um, caught up. There was that little window. And this yeah. is why you never hear about Sandy hoax because yeah. it was so thoroughly ripped apart from the moment it happened up oh, yeah. to the point where they started pulling the videos. And there are more, Boston, same thing. That's why the, the young children now probably have never heard the words because so many people ripped it apart. Right. If yeah. this was an open world, these kind of underhanded, we're taking over the world with fear maneuvers couldn't exist. Yeah. And so this synthetic world is our bane. You know, read Dune. We need our butt Larry and Jihad. And I can't believe I even say such a thing because I don't believe in fighting at all yeah. for almost any reason other than to save lives. But my point here is we have this creation, which is the only place where truth resides. There is no other place to find it. The people who are taking over the world or trying right now can't be the gods here because they can't be the grantor. They can't make trees. They can't make fish. They can't make any of the things nature makes. So they're creating this synthetic world of which they are grantor, yeah. of which they can claim godhood. And that's what all this is that we're doing right here. This synthetic, whatever we can call it, that's right. not very flattering. Yeah. No, excellent point. And yeah, the, the younger generations, I was thinking about that today, they've got a problem which is, you know, the American dream has been torn down and torn down again and torn down again to where what you just said, that they live on screens, they live in the digital world. And there was a report that came out, where it's like, oh, kids are using their cell phones less. I was going, yeah, where? where? They're, 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 it's, it's only a question now of what age they are when they get their first smartphone. Is it 10? Is it 12? Because I'm not even sure. Because once peer pressure gets in, you know, once your whole class gets it, you'll get it. You'll get it too, unless you're homeschooled. And then you got maybe a fighting unless chance. Unless Karen's your mom. Unless Karen's your mom. <laughs> yeah. It's like, that. I don't have I, you know, I, I have a phone, but I use it for two reasons. Yeah. To make phone calls and to text for roughly four people with any regularity oh. in a given week. I do not allow my email into my phone. I do not allow search engine searches from my phone. I do not allow location on my phone, GPS on my phone. And at any moment, I could easily throw it away. Sure. Um, and for you. this is the problem because that phone is the anchor for the world takeover that's about to happen, which China proved how it works. China proved how they can control every single human being down to the second. And that form of communism was forced back to the table by our State Department. When yep. Chiang Kai-shek was around, communism had been defeated and our State Department forced them to allow communists back to the table. And that's their dream gig. 
putting technology with communism and controlling everybody completely, every purchase, every travel, every border crossed or not crossed. And that phone is the device that allows that to be a possibility. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, again, more six billion, six billion and counting smartphones. More people have smartphones than have running water. That's saying something. And and they're grateful for, grateful for it on top of it. Hey, we're going to go to our uh, break. And then when we come back, I want to talk to you a little bit more about what you're doing. All right, would you be open to taking any phone calls or not? Sure. All right. Karen, let's go how, to that. How long is this break? I'm sorry. Oh, uh, which which one's this one, Karen? Five, Five minutes. minutes. Five minutes? Can I, okay, I'm, I'm going to use the restroom real quick. Oh, yeah, I'll you get plenty of time. I'll take calls. Thank plenty you. Okay. All right. Hey, are you a foodie? Are you looking for the best salsas and hot sauce to serve at your next Mexican cultural appropriation party? A salsa that will knock your guests flat on their rear ends? Or maybe you're just looking for that authentic roasted chili flavor. Imperio Salsa is small batch and handcrafted with choice non-GMO ingredients. It is legit my favorite salsa ever. Support your local flat earther and go to imperialsalsa.com and order some of the best salsa on the plane. Shipping is included on all USA orders and oh, look at this. The more you order, the more you save. They have some of the best seasonings that go great on your homemade guacamoles and quesadillas or whatever you like. They are the bomb. Season your meat with it. Season everything with it. Go get it. Keep it flat. Eat my salsa.
Welcome back to Strange World Part 3 of 4. It's you, me, the always lovely Karen B. Sometimes Peanut and special guest Crow777 from, you know, that lunar wave thing. Crow777radio.com. There you go. Thank you, Karen. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Before we get into... We're not going to take phone calls right this second, but we will pretty soon. Um, just so people know, let's, let's break down a couple of the details real fast. What are your top two go-to telescopes? What are, what are you using out there? Cause I'm sure professionals would like to know. Well, that's kind of a tricky question now because in my hiatus, yeah. um, things have changed right now. My biggest challenge is to get up to speed on the tech that drives scopes now. Oh, it's not just put it on a mount, align it, and go. Um, it's all networked, and you know how it goes. Yeah. My favorite scopes of all time are Schmidt cast grain, the eight-inch mead that was made in America before they went to Mexico and turned into crap. Um, was a fantastic scope. Still a tank. I got an eleven-inch, which I filmed just about everything else that people have looked at. Um, but it is so big and heavy um, that I can't really deal with dragging that around all the time anymore. So what I've done now is I did the moon pretty thoroughly, but the truth is, is the sun is the big deal. Um, it will always be the big deal. And in this age change that we're experiencing, the sun is key in that, which is why the full solar eclipse on the 8th of April here shortly mm -hmm. uh, coupled with probably a comet um, is going to be a memorable event. It stands as a marker and older cultures used to track both lunar and solar eclipses because they knew where they were in the age cycle, which is another thing that has been hidden from us and lied about. Um, right now I have a hydrogen alpha scope, but it really is quite unique. Um, took me years to save up for 130 millimeter lunt solar telescope but it's universal which means i can have a solar double stack so i can film the sun at the highest detail levels surface and prominence and everything else or i can remove all that and do nighttime shooting if i wanted to do galaxies or so-called planets or the moon um, but i'm going to focus in on the sun because there are two suns or at least that's what i'm going to call it for now and I'm going to prove it beyond the reasonable shadow of doubt if I can do so. And I don't know whether the sun we see would better be described as not a physical body. And the other thing that I first filmed in 2015 is, but um, Cammy Nodell was with, I can't remember his name. That's terrible. Chris. Yeah, Chris Van Maitre mm -hmm. um, replicated what I did, and she had some filters with her and is apparently an expert at that, which I am not. And she demonstrated that that other body is there, solid, not a reflection. But she also demonstrated with that that she could make the sun we see disappear. And this all has meaning. If you look at the old masonic woodcuts you know those little line drawings mm -hmm. that the masons do typically there's like a checkered floor yeah. almost always you see like a hole in the clouds and this light coming through to power the sun right but whatever it is is out of the frame you can't see what it is you see this over and over but reasonable logic will dictate that there's probably something to this once you've seen the footage that I put in Shoot the Moon that shows the sun we do not see that Chris Van Maitre replicated and that I predicted could be seen with the naked eye under the right conditions at sunrise and set. It's been filmed hundreds of times with stills and videos. And during the fires a year or two ago, it was filmed a number of times when the smoke was holding the glow of the sun we see down. But... If I was to ask you, what is the premier social engineering psychological operation film of our lifetime that has to do with space, what film would that be for you? 2001. Particu 
There you go. There you go. 2001 a Space, a space Odyssey. Odyssey. Yeah, 1968. Com yeah. Completely done at the highest levels to convince us that when they announced they put on a man on the moon, we would swallow it and believe it. Well, right. there's a sequel to that movie, which is actually a better movie. It's called 2010. Right. At the end of 2010, Roy Sch Scheider has a soliloquy where, where he informs everybody listening that my children will grow up in this new age with two suns in the sky. Right. Right. Good point. Oh. It's, I, it's not just there. Have you seen all the old? So everybody knows the, and this is hard to talk about because in this part of the world, most of us are raised Christian and I don't bag on anyone's religion because I think it's valuable without a spiritual path. What are we? Sure. So whatever your spiritual path, I'm fine. If you're not hurting anybody, but if you look at the old artwork, you'll always see John the Baptist and Jesus holding up the two fingers, looking up. And as everyone knows, Jesus is encoded as the son. The son is encoded in Jesus. I mean, it's been done to death. Mm -hmm. But John the Baptist, both of them regularly holding up two fingers. And I think it's, I forget, is that the sign of peace or blessing? I forget what the Vatican claims that means. Um, but I think there are vestiges that this has been known for a long time. And I further think that as we move into this new era, it will become common knowledge because it can't be hidden anymore. Wow. Nice. No. So, so when, for, well, let me get the, the first question. It's two parter. So you're going to, you're going to do the eclipse. Where, where, where are you going for it? Or is it coming right across you? I'll be in an 80% band. Okay. You're not gonna. You're not gonna drive a little bit to to try to pick up the hundred. No, it, the the equipment I have right now is so complex, and I only have what you know, not not even a month to uh, to dial it all in. So taking that road show, I'm not quite ready for that. Got it. Well, eighty percent is still not bad, and you should be able to get some great stuff. Well, the claim is that there will be five visible planets at totality so it would be saturn venus jupiter mars and i think there's one or two that you can't see with your naked eye like uranus or something i forget but then there's this comet now the problem with comets is the media always is misleading with comets they always try to blow it up to be a bigger deal than it is for the simple fact that comets are a malefic event as is a solar eclipse the light is being blocked. It is a malefic event. It is not a positive energy. So at totality, it is possible we will see a comet. Now, that is a massive deal and a double whammy. But this comet has a tail of its own because it was named. It's known periodic. I think it's 71 years is the period. What's Haley's is like 76 or yeah. 77. But this comet was named Pons Brook in the 1800s. For the two men, you know, it picks up the discoverer's name. Like the first comet I ever saw was like a few months after I got my first big telescope. Uh, Hale Bop was in the sky. So one guy named Hale, one guy named Bop. So the deal here is the media has now taken to calling this named comet the Devil Comet, which right. should tell everybody something. Right. I saw I saw that. I read about that, uh, what, a couple of weeks ago where it's and, and it's supposedly green. Is that true or not? Uh, that's a whole story on its own. When I first started doing this in the early 90s, um, I accepted Hubble, I accepted NASA, and I learned all that. And I memorized every comet that had ever been filmed, and I could look at them and I would know the comet. Now, there back then, the comets we saw in color images were white maybe a shade of blue, sometimes a hinge of yellow, very, not very often a hinge of green. Right. Now they are right around the year 2000. Every comet I have seen or imaged has been green. So whatever that means. Huh. That is very interesting. So just, just to be clear for those people out there, your ultimate goal with filming the sun coming up is you're hoping to, and, I, and if, if I'm giving away spoilers, you can say, no, you know, we'll, we'll figure that down the There's road. There's no spoilers. This, the sun is for everybody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but you're, you're trying to show two, two distinct 
Suns or at least something backing the Sun. Am I getting getting that right or wrong? There's another body there. It okay. needs to be proven beyond the reasonable, you know, doubt that it's there, and it needs to be demonstrated at least its movement, things like that. The sun we see with our eyes can be pulled into sharp focus. This other object, at least with the equipment that I found it with, cannot. It almost seems like it's on the other side of the firmament. It's slightly smaller, at least it was when I filmed it, and it can't be pulled in. It's like there's something in between, so you can't pull it into sharp focus. Um, wow. And it moves. When I shot it, it was two sun widths to the left and one up. When Chris Van Maitre found it, it was a couple suns to the right and down. When I've seen it filmed at sunset, it starts to level out at the same level as the sun. So there's an absolute movement to it. Hmm. Intriguing. Yeah. yeah. I actually saw Chris because uh, he was here for one of my events and he brought his his um, hydrogen alpha telescope and in the driveway and Cami was here he he actually pulled this pulled that sun up i mean it was incredible to me how he could just he just set up the telescope and he knew right where how to find it and he could pull it up right away right. Cami was here she had the um the polarized filters like what you were talking about i used to have some oh right i here. I, I will be contacting Cammy, I'll probably reach out through Rose and and see if she's willing to share her expertise when I get up to speed. Yeah, but it was it was fascinating. And then with it with the telescope, I mean, I saw it with my own eyes where she put the filters in there, and then you rotate the filters, and one sun will disappear and one won't. The sun we see will disappear, which implies that it's the non-substantial body. And the other one is actually the substantial body. Yeah. In other words, is it possible that other object is exactly what's depicted in the Masonic sketchboards and it is powering? It is the energy source for our sun or something. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna look this up. And and by the way, um, I think you're when you say sketchboards, I think you're referring to the uh the tracing boards. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> the anyone wants to look it up, there are five uh tracing boards out there in the masonic lore very interesting to, to five. Look at. there's way more than five yeah i thought there was i didn't realize there was only five no 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 there's there's five but there's there's different versions of the five um they're they're drawn they're interpreted in different ways but there's only mm. five um i didn't know that yeah it's true um they're called one two three uh, the first three are just numbers the fourth one is called <laughs> i couldn't make this up it's called mark for some reason and then the fifth one is called uh, uh, the Royal Arch. It's called Mark? Yeah. They... Okay, so let me talk about this for a second. So the reason it's called Mark is because it's referencing the Gospel of Mark. Ah. The Royal Arch is a level of initiation. Back in the day, way back, which is well documented in a book called The Devil's Pulpit that was written by a very smart man who was trained by the Vatican in divinity up to roughly the PhD level. He was a surgeon, a gifted orator. He spoke, I think, four or five languages. He knew the sky clock backwards and forward to the point where he could tell you the degrees of any given star rise in the time of day. Mm -hmm. And when we say the words Christian, Jew, Hebrew, I'm not going to remember them all. Anyhow, these were never people Jew was never a people, like a genetic people. Mm. Um, these were levels of initiation in the Masonic fraternity. And to be way up in that fraternity, you had to get initiated above the Royal Arch. The Royal Arch is simply, it's the sky. Mm. It's the arch of stars above your head. Um, and this world is now starting to catch on to the absolute importance of nature because it is the only truth we have access to and if we can see it like the sky clock it too is part of nature they have worked mightily to convince us that those little dots of light are looking back in time a hundred thousand years because they're a gazillion billion trillion light years away and i say poppycock to all of it but those luminaries are here for us those luminaries may be on different planes, but we cannot walk, in my view, on the moon. You can't put a boot on it. It's a light. 
you can't go land on Mars. Maybe there's living beings there, but they're at a different frequency or a different plane. And we see the light of that. And so when you go and recognize all that was encoded using the sky clock, you come to realize that that's really the driving energies of this world. And for people who have been taught that astrology is nonsense, well, most of the astrology you've heard about is nonsense. That's why it's here. But I will ask you one simple question with which proves outright the energies that are foundational to our lives. When I walk out my door in June, it's hot. When I walk out my door in December, it's freezing. What caused it? The sky clock caused it. Mm -hmm. There is your proof beyond argument of the energies bestowed on us from above. And we are catching on slowly and we are beginning to recognize that if it exists as matter or even not, it vibrates. So when you look at a light in the sky, you are looking at an energy source with a particular vibration and energy. This has been shuffled out of our view and our knowing for Lord knows how long, but now people are catching up again. Nice. Well said. All right. Uh, would you mind if we picked up a couple calls? Sure. All right. Let's <laughs> grab a couple anyway before the break, and then we'll pick up some more after. So we're going to go with 505 first. 505 in New Mexico, because as you know, it used to be old Mexico. I love New Mexico. Well, it's a nice place. What's up? Hmm. Hey, wow. <laughs> this is amazing. Um, I don't want to take too much of your time. Hey, Mark, hey, Karen, and uh, Crow and Peanut, of course. Um, wow, this is an amazing show. Thank you for all your work, Crow. And I have so many questions, but I'll keep it to one or two short ones here. Okay. Um, in your opinion, then, um, is there, are you seeing like a, a, a rhythm or a cadence to the wave going back to the, uh, the firmament wave or the lunar wave? Is there um, in other words, I think... I, I think what you're asking me, is it predictable in some way? Is that the root of what you're getting at? Yeah, like is there a timing or any kind of, yeah, absolutely. At first I was convinced it was specific to the moon and I had it in my mind that it had to do with equinoxes, which wasn't helped by the second wave being caught near the opposite equinox. As I would say now, absolutely not. If I had to venture a guess, this is absolutely a guess. It's an educated guess. I think it's just a wave that goes through the firmament. What causes it? I don't know. Um, but if that is true, it is my point of view that the firmament covers everything we can see when we look up. And probably the only reason it's ever been filmed in the ecliptic is because it has to be backlit so we can see it. As a matter of fact, when I get to filming the sun, I expect to see what people will probably call solar waves. Oh, that would be interesting. That would be really interesting. One thing I noticed about that, I mean, I haven't spent a ton of time filming the sky as you have, but I did at one point, I had this equatorial mount and then I had my P900 with the solar filter on it. And I was trying to take, um, I was taking uh, time-lapse footage of the sun with the solar filter on as close as I could get it with on the equatorial mount and it took me a few tries but eventually i did get some footage of the sun where it filled up you know it was it was pretty fill, filling most of the of the frame and in each one of these the sun was like doing this little it wasn't just smooth right like when it when i took a time lapse of it it was bouncing and it looked very much like the same sort of bounce you get in an like an electrical wave or like when lightning goes and it doesn't go in a straight line it kind of does like a jitter almost looks like a heat mirage uh well I, you know i don't know it just it wasn't like a straight line and i had it on a, like a and i i was convinced that it was somebody was trying to say well maybe your tripod's moving or whatever but i the tripod is like this ridiculously heavy tripod that was made for this equatorial mount and like the whole thing together. And I was doing it on a, on a summer day where there was like no wind. 
So I was like, there's no way that they, I mean, and I did it multiple times and every time there was a little bit of the sun in the frame or whenever it was, it, I filmed it, it would be like a 25 minute time lapse or whatever. It was just, it was never a straight line. It was always like, like it was elect, it just to me, it was like that signature of it being sort of like electrically driven, if that makes sense. Sure. I, I have seen similar things. It reminds me of a mirage or like what you would try to describe as caused by heat. But that's another thing altogether, because the old alchemists made fun of people who said the sun was hot because it was self-evident that it was not. And they said, well, if the sun's hot, why is there snow and ice on top of mountains? Um, they had all these logical reasons that show that it's basically energy and everything we know is wrong you know this now is the time for us to relearn so much of what we haven't learned and to get rid of so much of the nonsense that was put in our head even our math is wrong our math is ridiculously wrong what it does our language all of it all these systems what they do is they give you a workable method to get along in this system what it absolutely does not do is teach you anything about this world. But what's the worst part about it is it ensures you can only get to a certain level. As an example of this, zero is an insult. Zero does not exist. It cannot be verified by nature. Even basic math, one times one is not freaking one. Look up the definition for what multiplication is. At minimally, it would have to be two, and on and on this goes. The periodic table of elements is another prime example. We can use it. We can make bleach. We can make all these usable things, but it guarantees that we are capped at a certain level. And the other thing that all these systems do is they ignore the spiritual component, which from my point of view is way more than half of a human being's potential existence. Gotcha. Yeah, I would have to agree with that. Hey, New Mexico, mm -hmm. um, did you have one sh more short one? Uh, yeah, any, any, um, any, I, well, I have so many, but I'll just keep it to this last one, Mark. Thanks. Uh, any ideas what we might be seeing um, in this upcoming eclipse in, in regards to what do you actually think is maybe going to make totality happen for the sun? Uh, yeah. What is that object or that or any conclusions on that? Yeah, um, I spent years filming, as everyone knows, and in that time, roughly a little over half a decade, something on the order of six years, maybe six years plus, I filmed every single solar or lunar eclipse that I could film, along with transits like Mercury and Venus, these types of things. About halfway through that time, I set out to do one simple thing during a solar eclipse, film the moon, and it can't be done. In 2017, I had exhausted everything I could do with the best equipment I could have asked for, full spectrum cameras, solar cameras, big telescopes, telephoto lenses, any filter you can imagine. And I announced that the moon plays no role. Well, that might not be the right way to say it. Let me say it like this. The moon is not what is blocking out the sun. It's the nodes. They're called Ketu and Rahu in the ancient Vedic tradition, and they knew the truth and have been saying the truth for millennia now. And what's interesting about that is those nodes are theoretically imaginary points in space. It's where, you know, an ecliptic crosses an equator, basically. But we know that it's not, but it's more. And if you go online right now to try to determine what kind of light the sun is, you probably won't be able to get there. 15, 12 years ago, you could. It's called an infinite light source. And I was a roadie on stages for many years, and I learned a lot about light. If I take a spotlight as an example, and I shoot it on a person who's in front of a wall, it will cast shadow. If I move the spotlight or the person, the shadow will change size and orientation depending on that move. But if I take an infinite light source like the sun is, which used to be commonly admitted online, 
the shadow will always remain the size of the object casting the shadow regardless of what is moved. This is why when an airplane flies over your head, the shadow is the size of the airplane. But what this tells us is during the last eclipse in 2017, we were informed that the shadow left by the eclipse was, I think, 72 or 73 miles across. You know what that means? Unarguably, it means the object that eclipsed the sun was 72 or 73 miles wide. Right. That cannot be argued. It right. is what it is. Yep. And so this time, I think they're claiming, I just looked at it. I want to say it's 127 miles, but I think I read it in kilometers. So not only that, um, things have changed, right? So clearly, if it's the same function, it must have gotten closer to us mm -hmm. to go from 72 miles wide to 127 miles wide. But there's more. We're told this magical, nonsensical story that the moon is exactly... 400 times smaller than the sun, but luckily the sun is 400 times more distant, so the moon just neatly, perfectly covers it. Well, that's not true either. An eclipse does not always cover the, the entirety of the disk, but here's the thing. At no time can, well, let me, let me say it like this. We'll take NASA's nonsensical data. The sun is 93 million miles away. The moon is roughly 340,000. So the sun is the brightest thing we could possibly consider in our existence. And this thing that's only a quarter of a million miles away is going to be backlit by the sun. And yet I can't film it. Yeah. I hey, cannot film it. Amazing. John, we got it. We got to go to break. So uh, say goodbye. Yeah, real fast. let's go. Okay. Yeah. Hey. yeah, shout out to Amy in Syracuse and Jan in Dallas and, of course, Mark, Karen, and Crow. Thank you so much. Keep right. it flat, everybody. All God right. bless you. Bye. We're, we're, nice, we're, nice to meet you. We're going to our final break. When we come back, uh, we're going to take more of your phone calls for Crow. And so hold that thought, whatever you had in your head, Crow. And we'll be back. Karen. might be listening. CIA? Maybe. The aliens? Probably. Globalists? Definitely. I may have already said too much. We have what you need. Really? It's flat. I'm listening. And round. Go on. And delicious. Tell me the secret. tomorrow we move around quite a bit ah a mobile command center a strong strategy i like where your head's at anything else hmm i was never here
or something. Copy that, Alpha 33. Come on back. Let's see. Long live Flat Earth. Long live Flat Earth! Welcome back to Strange World, part four of four. It's you, me, the always wonderful Karen B, and sometimes Peanut Gallery. See, it all rhymed. I put it all together like that. And special guest, Crow777. You still there, man? I am. Wonderful. Uh, let's see here. We were picking up phone calls. Let's go to 646 out of Manhattan. What's happening out there in dreary old New York? Do we really have a crow triple seven on here right now? Yeah, we do. Indeed. That sounds familiar. Who is this? <laughs> it's Alex. Dude, I've been waiting 10 years to talk to you. 10 years. But I, you know, I know Jason and Rose, but I was like, crow is on the show tonight? Yeah. That's fucking awesome. So, yeah. so who yeah. am I speaking with? Yeah, this like, is Alex Lowry. I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you. I'm telling him. <laughs> it's Alex Lowry. The bat's out of the keg, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I've been like, I do the lunar waves, all that shit. Like, I, dude, you set me back like three weeks, like just on learning about camera equipment. Like three weeks. I just fucking nerded out for three weeks on camera equipment alone. I couldn't even go back to the, the master idea of what I was going to think about, which was like, is this place fucking round or flat or whatever the fuck it is? I have to go back and learn about a fucking telescope. And I went back and I was studying all your, your, um, you know, uh, obviously the lunar wave was kind of a big deal. Yeah. But I was like, you know, did you ever, did you ever get Slurpees when you were a kid, Crow? Of course. You remember that little plastic globy thing you put on top of the cup? I knew you were going to say know? that I do. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm yeah, talking so about? Yeah, so you can get more stuff and in so there. Like, yeah. You know, I was always... the, the Slurpee firmament? Yeah, yeah. But... <laughs> You would say, well, yeah, I mean, you, you, I guess you could go that way if you wanted to. I was actually like, I was going through this whole thing. I was, you know, this was back in the day. And I'm like, I always wondered, like, when I shine a flashlight to that thing, it looks like the little dot of light is actually inside of the dome, which is like the focus point of where uh, the light would happen on a, on a dome. It would actually focus and it would manifest in a certain position that looks like three dimensionally inside of the Slurpee. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, do you know what I'm talking about? Of course. Yeah, and so like you know, when people talk about the apparent position of the sun, or the apparent position of the moon, or the apparent horizon, whatever, whatever the fuck they're talking about. I was just thinking, it was like, there's a possibility there's a manifestation of light there that's it, it, it's coming from a different position. And I remember also watching you um, uh, when you were trying to discern is this lens flare on your on your telescope? Yeah, right. And how do I how do I get past this? Whether or not there's is this lens flare? Is this something else or whatever? I really spent weeks on this shit a long time. And I was like, I can't figure it out. And Cammy, I, I Cammy solved that problem definitively, but I think I had two because I put a four foot two, which incidentally, I later learned Chris Van Maitre did the exact same thing, thinking exactly what I did. The, the issue was I had thousands of hours of nighttime and, and moon work. I only had about a hundred or maybe more uh, with the solar work and I was tired of fighting with people. So I put it out and I let it be for a while. Yeah. And well, at the same time, I, I was like, I, I was really like, well, if we're dealing with uh, possibly a two dimensional thing and, you know, in our little, you know, spherical dome of ourselves looking at something. Right. I was, I was really like, I, I, again, I struggled with this for a long time. I was like, how am I supposed to man or just manage dealing with something that I think is spherical, which isn't behaving spherically. 
okay? And then you have an apparent position of it, and it's relative to every single person looking at it from whatever position they're at, you know, on this call it a realm. And I'm like, man, you know what? Ultimately, it's just like having a Slurpee. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if the sun was what we were told it is, then how come we can't use just simple triangulation to know things like distance? And I have heard it put forward that in the same way, our point of view has a huge effect on what the moon looks like to the individual. I have heard people say that the sun may be unique to the observer. Yeah. Indeed. Indeed, that, that 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 again. It's like I've lived with that for like a lot of years. It's like there's a lot of people that talk about like, well, the sun used to be orange and now it's brighter or whatever. I don't know what that is or whatever, but I'm, I'm telling you, like when you're looking up, you have a plumb line, you have all these things that you can examine where the sun is, its exact position and where it's looking, whatever. And oh wait, one more question because I know that there's more people that want to ask you questions, but like the path of totality, if you look at a map on the not the Mercator project is it the mercator projection whatever it shows the, the the path going up and through the states right yep. um but uh, maybe you could elaborate a little bit more on what that actually means because they're talking about totality through indiana and up into buffalo and whatever it doesn't exactly look like it's going exactly the way it should go around say um uh, you know a flat earth map well i i mean it's does that make any sense it's kind of common sense for anyone who thinks that we don't even know the shape of the continent we're sitting on, nor do we know the number of continents that actually exist, nor do we know what's beyond the guarded Antarctica, nor do we really know much about the supposed North Pole. It's all been lied about, right? But here's the thing. Mm -hmm. For those who have followed me and they're aware of the work of people like James Shelby Downard and Michael Hoffman, who offered us more insight to how this place actually came to be. This last eclipse went through Lord knows how many cities named Salem. This one we're about to have goes through Lord knows how many Nineveh. cities. Yeah, Nineveh. Nineveh. And what's Nineveh. Nineveh? That's to do with Jonah and the whale. And there's an eclipse in that story. In other words, the Masonic organizations, seemingly according to Downard, that named these places knew damn well they were in the path of a eclipse didn't they or they wouldn't have named them that way um this is biblical in what it means this is a big damn deal we are doing an age change did it already happen is it about to happen are we doing it now i can't certainly tell you but i can guarantee you the world we all used to be used of used to that world is behind us and it is never coming back again the only question that remains is, are we going to allow ourselves to be slaved out for some period of time, or are we going to demand our birthrights when we were granted the divine spark and free will and made beneficiaries of this creation? Because the energies that allowed us to get to where we are, give me a second, the energies that allowed us to get where we are, we're on a descending age trajectory down to a dark age. We are now ascending again. Anyhow, go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to say, this is the last thing. I'll, I'll leave it here because I know some more people want to ask you some questions. Um, also, um, I love your approach to actually generating people reactions to get them to actually get proactive about actually waking up or actually looking at the world and using their senses and everything else. You know, you know, eyes, nose, ears, taste, everything else touching, like looking at the actual world. Um, yeah, like I, I want to start start now manifesting as opposed to you take an approach of like, you're you're more of like a warning. You're a warning person. You're warning people this could happen. You're and you're getting that that engagement out of them. I would say just to swim with you here because I have a great deal of respect for you. We can manifest now. Yeah. Yes. We can manifest something. We always could. Yeah, you're a legend, buddy. I'm getting off. Nice to meet you and, and have a fantastic year. Yeah. <laughs> you indeed. See you, Alex. Oh, hey, hangs up. It's going to be a memorable one. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I tend to agree. You know what? Let's let's taking a little trip to Indiana to get into the path of totality to, to record the eclipse myself. I want to put some cameras on it. Not a fancy scope like you. I can't wait to see what you record. 
I'm looking forward to see what you put out. Yeah, you know, I'm a little bit nervous because there has been no event since I've been here. There have been two or three major events. And each time I announced I was going to film it and each time they began chemtrailing heavily, like as heavy as they can at sunup. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm worried about. I'm just hoping that the sky is clear so we can get a look. Yeah. <laughs> And again, for those of you who don't know, if you've been stuck in a cave for the last couple of months, what we've been talking about is the eclipse is going to be going diagonally through the eastern part of the United States, starting in Texas. If you, you know what? Just draw a slightly bent line from Texas to Maine. And if you're in that path, hey, great, wonderful, happy for you. Uh, but uh, in fact, it's going through, Peanut says, Broken, Broken Bow, Oklahoma. So and you're going out for it, right? You're going to be in Broken Bow? Awesome. Peanut nods, yes. He will be there. Why are you a peanut, Peanut? <laughs> oh, oh, he's a, just Peanut Gallery. It just stuck. You know, uh, from, from the old I howdy show from, from years and years ago. I thought he was all about the legumes or something. No, <laughs> no. I don't even know if he, if, he, if he even eats peanuts. Well, if they're not cigarette flavored, I don't know if he'd eat them. So. <laughs> We can get some nicotine nuts. Nicotine nuts. <laughs> Eat it. Look that up. That could help you. <laughs> no. no, he's never quitting. Ever. Never. In fact, yeah, people will no be. No quitter. No, you when during his funeral down the road, you won't be shoveling in dirt. You'll be shoveling in tobacco. Ac actually, thank you, Chuck, and comments, everybody. If you haven't heard about boiling vinegar outside, it freaking works. And as we come into the eclipse, it would be awesome if about 200,000 people went out that morning and began to boil gallons of vinegar because then that the chem trailing would not work. And by the way, I'm doing it here and it, it freaking works. It works like just do it. You'll be blown away. That is a away. good idea. That is a good idea. That's. Thanks for saying that, because now I'm going to put that in my in my <laughs> on my checklist. I'll bring a couple gallons of vinegar. I've only tried it uh, um, once, once or twice, but it did seem to work. It was weird. <laughs> Weiss it, called me and he said, is this real? I'm going to do it. And he called me back. He's all, oh, my God. It was bizarre because like my it was just over my house. And then it was really I did it on a day that it was it ended up kind of being windy. But the sky cleared up and it was like in the direction of the wind even it was just yep what i was what, like no way what what kind of vinegar i just, use distilled white vinegar i just went to costco and bought that big old cheap yep. uh distilled vinegar regular three bucks vinegar. for like a gallon or something and made yeah. your made your neighborhood smell you like you pour a, it in a big pot and you put it on a hot plate and boil it outside and it you, just steams yeah, off you, off you don't the air. after a while you don't really smell it but what it does is it causes a chain reaction when it goes up and after it happens like i would estimate the ring that i make is two or three miles on either side of me it creates really? a chain yeah it creates a chain reaction of some kind it works it's like wow. it's like a neutralizer. It's like it it the only way I could think about it is like you use vinegar vinegar to neutralize like other stuff in chemistry like baking soda or whatever oh, or like right. lye. Right. So it's yeah, for whatever reason it works. It's pretty crazy. You use vinegar in, like on chemical burns, for example, instead of yeah. instead of water. Right. Hmm. All I know is you pee on jellyfish stings. <laughs> <laughs> i have not had a jellyfish sting but that i would works, try that it. works too yeah but i would try it oh uh, yeah the low level stings anyway the other stings you gotta just hope you, you just gotta it. stand on your head <laughs> what seriously that makes me wonder if boiling urine would do the same thing, although that would be so gross. I don't know if I want to try. No, nope, no. Nope. You know what? I don't even not want to know. Wait, what wouldn't that create ammonia or something? Oh my god! Yeah, I don't know. Don't Anyhow, do it. nobody we, try we, it. Let us know what happened. We, we we should let the callers who are patiently listen to All us right. talk about nothing. Uh, okay, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna we're gonna pick up a short one and then do eight four five. We only got time for like two more calls anyway. So five three zero, we're gonna limit you on this one. What do you got? Hello, it's William. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. 
Dan. Hello? Yeah. Oh, excellent. Hey, Joe Triple, uh, Crow Triple Seven. My name's William. Uh, Hi. I sometimes call on the show. Haven't been lately since I've been raising a kid. Uh, um, a believer, born again. I appreciate your work. Uh, so I was looking up some of the history. I kicked myself in the butt. I was 60 miles away from the path of totality in 2017. Had I traveled 50 more miles, I think I would have been in the 100 versus 98. Told it's a big difference, even 99 to 100. Um, I'm not going to be close enough to this one, but I um, was looking at this path. Um, the one in 2017 was 70 miles wide, and it went from the top of where Mark was down to the Gulf. So it came down in a southern eastern direction. This one's going in a northeastern direction, and the path is 117 miles wide. So that's per near double the size. So whatever's up there in the sky, if they're claiming the moon is passing in front of us in the sun, it shouldn't matter how far the sun is. If they're saying that the orbit of the moon is, um, I think it's parodies between 285 and 385, so if we're in the middle, that means that's only 50,000 mile difference. How could you get a double in size path? I don't think the math works out, and I think your basic algebraic equation would prove that totally invalid, if I'm not mistaken. Any well, thoughts on that? Yeah, Is I can solve easy? it. The moon has nothing to do with the blacking out of the sun during a solar eclipse. And here's another thing. When you can't see the moon well, at the end, the shadow of it? I'm I'm sorry. Say it again. I, I, I thought they claim. I thought they claim that the moon is what's blocking the sun. That they so are. They're it, they're lying. It's the shadow. Yeah, it's the shadow. So that's what I'm saying. It's it's proof that they're lying to us because if the shadow is 117 miles wide, that path something whatever is blocking it is now doubling in size versus 2017, which that can't work out because however far the moon is from us, there's only a 50,000 mile difference with a, almost a 400,000 mile. So what I'm saying is if you do a basic equ algebraic equation, it will not solve out. If you made X the real distance of the moon or the size, it could not work. That's the problem with you know accepting. Saying, yeah, that's that. the problem with accepting their distances or their explanations. The moon is not three hundred and forty thousand miles away. Yes. If you think you can take your naked eye and see something over a quarter of a million miles away, you have successfully been brainwashed into oh, believing agreed. things that are fantastic. Agreed. But I will further add: when a moon hits the end of its cycle, we call it new. You can't see it. I made this prediction years ago. It can be proven, and that was one of the things that chemtrails blocked me because Venus was occulted by the moon, which would have proved what I said. At a new moon, it is in fact, in my view, accurately described. When it starts to light again, it is not the same moon you were just looking at. It's the new moon, and when it is very young for the first, I don't know, maybe two days, maybe a little bit longer. It is my prediction that at new and when super young, it is see-through. Nice. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey William. Hey, just really one last quick question. Had, oh, go I ahead. Really heard much go ahead. Um, the original one that made all the, the that wave, have you captured another one over the shoot since I've been following this movement since uh, 2015? Have you captured any other ones besides that one solar wave or anything else phenomenal? In, that? in oh. my, so we have the membership on Crow Triple Seven Radio gets free access to the two hour film that Jason made covering all my interesting scope work. There are five lunar waves, so called lunar waves that I filmed. There are two that Randy from Houston filmed. And also there is the initial 20 end of 2014 early 2015 filming of the sun we don't see it's all in the film uh, okay well um thank you great meeting you um thanks karen thank you uh, uh mark and shout out to jaren uh jan and Lulu one who we'll sure we'll hear from soon so uh thank you have a good night god bless you all right thanks man all right 
the last call of the evening. Let's see what he's got. <clears throat> Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. <laughs> I want to be a part of it with special guest Crow Triple Seven. New Year with special guest Crow Triple Seven. New York, New York. Hello, Crow. Hello, Karen. Hello, Mark. Peanut. Howdy. Man, I love you guys. I love you a lot, Crow. I, I, I don't know if you remember um, me and, uh, um, sorry, I was going to say peanut gallery. Brian Burton, we interviewed you a couple years back, and you opened my eyes to a bunch of things that I had seen personally, a different way to look at it. Just wanted to say that I love you and Jason. I've been listening to you 2015. The weekend I was on vacation, August, I found your lunar wave stuff. And I was like, oh, what's this? You know, watch it. And it was like, holy shit. Immediately went to see the debunk videos because, you know, <laughs> this guy crazy. And I watched 40 of them. And every one of them was, oh, he's a poo-poo head. He doesn't know what he's doing. He messed <laughs> up the camera. And I'm like, not one of them said one logical thing to dispute it. And I was hooked. And then, of course, <laughs> I ran into Mark Sargent's uh, Flat Earth Clues that same weekend. And that's and it and i've been listening to you forever and i just love all the stuff you do i can't wait to see what you come up with this eclipse video um uh footage and hopefully you get some good one clear day and your solar stuff like and I, i'm sorry i'm just i'm such a fanboy dude sorry <laughs> sorry <laughs> no worries uh, yeah uh yeah i i was at karen's when chris and cammy were doing that and that 1000% solidified to me that this is nothing that we've ever been told mm -hmm. where we exist. And I, I, since your stuff, I, I mean, I've agreed back even with the Russian spider theory and uh, what's the <laughs> I forgot the guy's name? The Patty guy. Bob. I haven't heard but, that in about oh, a millennium. Thank you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Told you. I've been listening forever, forever. And since then, I I knew you couldn't go there, and and it's crazy that people even can consider it. And of course, the logic stuff you put out, like um, douchebag, do you really think you can see three hundred fifty thousand miles detail? Come on, uh, it's just I'm sorry, it just triggers me how people are in denial. And you put out really really good work, very very logical, very easy to digest. Jason is phenomenal. I mean, I don't think you could have found a better researcher. You know, Jason has me. a heart of gold. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, we love Jason. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I try not to. I'm trying to be respectful and not use foul language around you. I don't know why, because you're just a cool dude. But I just, I can't help myself. And like, by, by the world. way, the, uh, the is awesome to hear you. The show that Zulu is referring to is actually, believe it or not, Crow was on this show a long time ago. He was on Strange World episode eight. Really? June, wow. June, June 13th, 2015. Way back when, when I didn't have any idea what I was doing. Wow. So, yeah, <laughs> if you guys want to look it up, please. Well, Strange World I'll, episode I'll, eight. I'll, I'll tell you what. If, if I can prove beyond doubt that there's um, another son there, Maybe we can make bumper stickers that says something like "Remember Tatooine" or something ridiculous. Oh yeah, that's right. That 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 scene in Star mm. Wars with the it looks stuff. exactly like that. By the it way, does. that's exactly what it looks like with your yeah. eyes. It totally does look like that. Yep. Yeah, I have to mm. say the whole second yeah, sun thing. That that's like it. the the uh, there was the official like the Earth, uh, you know, the whole universe as we know it is not as we were told. That was like the initial, and then that seeing that sun when that day when Chris was in the in my driveway and I saw that with my own eyes, I was like, whoa, dude, that was like the the that was like the next closest thing to be like <laughs> having my mind blown again because I was like I like. Cause that's undeniable. Like when you see it like that, you know, it's just like, it anything. once you see it, it's undeniable. like, can't unsee it. Nobody can tell me otherwise. Screw you. You know, like <laughs> no. it's not what they say. No, it is. no. <laughs> Everything you know is wrong. Dogs fly spaceships. <laughs> hey, um, Zulu, I, cause I know it's going to take you a while to, uh, to wind down. You got a quote or anything? 
Yeah, I'm, I have a quote, and I, I'm I'm okay now. I'm okay. I oh, no, 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 it's fine. Sorry. Did, you, did you need a I napkin for all that gushing you're doing over there? Oh, cool. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> uh, yes, I have a quote. Okay. Though free to think and act, we are held together like the stars in the firmament with ties inseparable. These ties cannot be seen, but we can feel them. Nikola Tesla. Nice. And I'm just referencing us, you know, I mean, having the connection, we, we actually get to know cripple, uh, cripple crow triple seven. I mean, we get to talk to him. We get to, I mean, it's just amazing. Again, the information like people it's undeniable. Like you said, looking at the second, second light in the sky, whatever you want to call it, the sun, uh, I'm sorry, Rahu and K, K, how do you say K2? K2. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's just uh, absolutely undeniable. Mm -hmm. Undeniable. We are well, not. This on is the name of the game. Consider state. this. So if this becomes, if myself or someone else can prove it, like I did with the lunar wave, that this is in fact there, it's a real thing. Can you imagine when it becomes common knowledge because it's in the sky every day, what that will do for human consciousness? Think about two suns yeah. in the sky, yeah. what Needs. that will do to human consciousness. For anyone who has ever sun gazed, I remember telling White, or Weiss told me he had heard me way back. He starts sun gazing. He's one of the few people I know who got up to 45 minutes. And he said what I told him would happen. His eyes were fixed, first of all. But you get an energy that is indescribable and you get... It's almost like downloads, insightful downloads. Um, but my point is to double that and probably with a slightly different frequency because they do appear slightly different, like the tattooing thing. One is kind of ready. The other one is a little bit more like our son. I'm just saying it, we are in for a very interesting new era. Agreed. Indeed. Hey, Zulu, or give me give me some uh, quotes. I got to wrap or give me a shout out. I got to wrap this up. Oh, uh, quick shout out to uh, Ice Queen, Mark Sargent, Karen B, Peanut Gallery, NDB, um, Cammy, Chris Van Matry, holy shit, they're big for this. And Zach did a video on it indoors, and it was a nice, good explanation. It was, it was a good one if you should watch it. Uh, good times for all. And William, love you guys. Thank you, Crow, Mark, Karen, Peanut. Yeah. Cheers. Nice to meet you. Hey Crow, uh, give me you again. Throw, plug your your website one more time. Um, Crow Triple Seven Radio dot com, which is C R R O W seven 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 Radio dot com. Cool. And you have an episode coming out tomorrow, a half episode with Wayne McCroy. No, it's a full. Uh, oh, we named full? yeah, we had to name it point five because we had so many things recorded, we didn't want to have to redo the numbering. So it's oh. a regular episode. Uh, it's eight bucks a month to join. And when you join, you get access to everything forums, you can create forums. But by the way, when I start getting video again of the sun and the other things I film, it will only be posted on my private server for membership. I will not be subjecting it to the control of social cesspool media platforms. All right. I'm a member. I'll get to see it. <laughs> He says with some glee. All right, we're tying a bow on this one. So say good night, Karen. Good night, Karen. Say good night, Zulu. Good night, Zulu. Say good night, Crow. Chow Mein. And <laughs> Peanut just waves us nice, off. Nice. And uh, that's a wrap, everybody. Hot sex, roll credits. We're out of here. Sex. All right. Thanks for being here, everybody. Thanks, Crow. Thanks, Crow. Thank you. Now let's go get some of these nicotine nuts. I'm going to look that up.
as it's ever been Wound up chasing stars All over again There's words for what you got What you have And what you'll ever need So many nights, so many nights, so many ways to Mike Jack. Jack Jack. You realize it's the same link every week. It never changes. Yeah, I know. I should paste it somewhere, I think. Hello, Daisy. Hello, Mr. 